Hi, I want to give you some guidance on Criterion A1 here. So first of all, we should always start with this design technology IA checklist, okay? And we should be looking at both the tasks and the guidance. So if we look at the tasks, the first thing that we're doing is we are describing the current situation. So essentially you are describing the problem that you've identified or the design opportunity that you've identified. And you're going to support that with primary and secondary evidence. And we'll We'll, um, we'll get to that in a minute. You need to outline that problem and how it affects a wider audience. So this is your target market. And again, supporting with primary and secondary research, um, showing that this, this is indeed a problem that needs to be solved. Uh, supporting images are really important for that. You need to conduct user and marker research to identify um, and describe the design opportunity. This is really important as an insight for um, creating a, a new design. Um, and then um, you should also be, be looking at um, looking at secondary and primary research to help you in the development of your of your ideas so that you can create that design brief. Okay? So let's look at what the guidance is saying. It's saying that you definitely need to be using primary and secondary research, right? So photographs, that's primary extracts from magazines and newspapers, that would be secondary. Internet data is secondary. Observations are primary. Questionnaires are primary. Surveys are primaries. User tests are primaries. User inter interviews are primary. Uh, Self-appraisal would be primary. Expert opinion, primary, unless you're getting that from the internet, because that could be secondary also. But you will notice that a lot of these um, ways of, of researching are primary, and that is very important. Okay, market research may also include sales patterns. This is going to be all kinds of secondary stuff. So you're looking at consumer behaviors, shopping trends, trends forecasts. So we could be using Google Trends to look at this, but we could also be look, looking at Amazon. What's out there? Doing some sort of um, existing product type analysis to figure out what already exists in the market. And this is actually really important too because you don't want to create something that already exists. So if you create something that already exists, well, you know, you're not going to score well because that's something that's already out there on the market. You need to analyze all this information and present only clear and meaningful write-ups that are short and concise. So this is, you're not droning on about your research. You're basically summarizing what the research is and how, how you, and what you learned from it. So really quick, concise summaries of your research. And this, any evidence should be in your appendix. So any evidence of the research process is in your appendix. Now you're not going to hand those into the to the IB, but I will be able to look at them, um, and I, I do expect to be able to see your 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 research that you've done. And you're again you're you're including a synthesis of the research and the key outcomes. And you don't forget to uh, cite your sources. So let's look at some examples of that. So first of all, 200 words, right? That's another important idea here is that this should only be about 200 words, not too much more. And I know that's really difficult to keep your, your, um, the length of, of your design opportunity to 200 words, okay? But let's have a look here. So you can see this is their, their problem statement. So this is that design opportunity, okay? It's, it's relatively short, relatively short. And let's look at how they scored specifically on strand A1. So on strand A1, they've identified, do we, they identify a problem or identify as appropriate problem that leads to a design opportunity, or are they describing an appropriate design uh, problem that leads to a design opportunity? So we can see that they scored, um, that they sc scored in the four, uh, four through six band, and they scored that this is an identified a design um, need based on client-based approach uh, to gathering information. So essentially they've, they've identified this. What they haven't done is used user research and target audience um, to help describe the problem. So that would have, have kicked their score up to the next level if they had done more user research, more target market research to help them. So questionnaires and surveys and interviews and observations and things like that. If they had done more of that, then in detail, they would have actually scored higher. So that is the big recommendation for strand 1A is, or A1, is you really, really, really need to include target market research. It is very important if you want to score into the higher bands. Let's look at another example. So this is again the problem statement. Again, quite concise and short. This does not, it should not be 
a really long statement. Um, the, this person also scored in the same band, in this middle band, the four through six. They identified the school system for communication with students. It was ineffective, drawing upon feedback from users and experts. But what they didn't do is they didn't consider the wider market. They didn't include evidence of research with users, you know, school counselors, um, and they made a bunch of assumptions about aesthetics rather than gathering that information from their target market. And that's what's going to, honestly, if you look at the examples here that the IB has provided us and the guidance, you can see that one of the most important things is involving the users, understanding their needs by interviewing them, surveying them, questionnaires, that sort of thing. If you're not doing that, you simply will not, um, you're not going to score in the, the higher bands. Okay, thanks.